<laughs> okay guys, we're gonna walk you through how generators interface with these hybrid multi-input inverters. Just some of the general ground rules. I think it's very well misunderstood uh, by a typical user, uh, just how the math works and what the limitations are. So one of the most important things to understand about an inverter that uh, is also a charger is the fact that electrically you have your AC in side and then you have your AC outside. And internally we've got our we've got our inverter power head and internally uh, there is basically a double throw switch. So AC out is always hooked up, inverters here, AC ends here. So the AC out is always connected, and obviously, and then we have a relay inside that goes to either the inverter to power the AC out or the AC in. Now the inverter is also, the charger function is connected to the AC in terminal. So the inverter is aware of ACN all the time. But if you want, if you're trying to run the inverter as a charger, we have our all this plugs to our batteries, put those right over here, 48 volts. So if we want to use this as a charger, it must pull from the grid to, to power that. Well, in order to do that, it cannot be an inverter and a charger at the same time. So what's gonna happen is this relay is gonna go, this is gonna head down, and it's gonna end up straight over connected. So basically, your power from the ACN, also known as your generator, is passing straight through from the generator to your loads. So if you had a house, if you had three 5,000 watt inverters, and you had a house that was normally pulling eight kilowatts, let's just say that this is in our scenario, eight kilowatts of load potential while you're trying to charge your batteries with your generator. All right, now that's just for starts. The next thing that will happen is the inverter will then seek to load the AC input and try to charge the batteries. Now the problem that you have to be aware of is that each of these inverters can be putting in up to about 4,000 watts of power to the batteries. So if I have three of them, that's 12 kilowatts. Now I can go in and potentially ramp down the amount of power that they're putting in, but I'm still limited by another factor with generators to begin with, which is that a generator needs to be kept under 60%. This is important, 60% of nameplate rating. After 60% load, the generator power quality will collapse and that will cause damage to your inverter. It will cause damage to the electronics, which are hooked just directly up to the generator. So if you wanna use an inverter in inverter charger mode, you have to have a massive superiority in sizing. So ultimately, what's the right size generator for this? Let's say I cut my, in, my inverters down to half, to two kilowatts each. Two kW times three, all right? That's six. So I've got eight, and I'm gonna add six for the charger. And I get 14. Now, the problem is, remember my 60% rule, you can't go over 60% without really seeking to cause damage in your electronics, including your inverse. So we take 14 and we divide it by 0.6 and that puts us in a position where we have to be using, if you were to do this right, okay, if we say six goes into 14 and six goes in twice, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna break, I'm gonna put the numbers down here. Two, two times six is 12, minus two, six goes into 23 times and we'll have a remainder. So we're searching for 23 kW. We have to have 23 kW in order to pull this gig off. So unless you're committed to buying a 23 kilowatt generator, using the inverters as your generator input is not really a good idea. 
what I would tend to do for most people, we sell 25 amp slash 1.5 kW chargers. Or you could buy an extra inverter, which is an 80 amp charger, and you plug those straight into a generator and you come out with 48 volt. And the interesting thing that's happening there is you're not disengaging your inverters. This stays connected, and so your inverters are there to power your loads as they ramp up in the house, but your generator acts as a steady feedstock of DC current charging your batteries. This is the optimal route and it puts the least amount of wear on the inverter, not to mention the wear on your home electronics. The home electronics, TVs, refrigerators, computers, they weren't designed to be run by a generator, and you're going to, you're going to chew into the life of all of your appliances. So I'm very, very generator, I'm generator cautious. It's possible to buy a big enough generator and to run it all, in theory, yes, but obviously, in my opinion, for a fraction of the money, you could get a dedicated charger and just convert your gasoline or propane to DC current as a backup and let the inverter stay in one mode. It's going to do the best for the longevity of the inverter as well. Uh, and that's really just what we want to explain to most people on generators. It sort of always is coming up. Uh, the other thing to remember, if you're buying... You know, in context, a lot of people have these, these 5,000, 6,000 watt generators. I mean, really, you could say with 60% multiplier, but those cheaper ones tend to only go to 50%. So I'd much rather tell somebody to buy a couple of the, you know, 1,500 watt chargers and on their tractor supply generator than to try to backfeed one inverter because they're just going to be tripping it. They're going to be starving everything for power and it's not going to end well. So that's really the explanation we'd give you guys for generators.